Hi everyone, I'm Laura from Omtara. Thanks for joining me here today. Teaching beading to others is one of my greatest passions, so I hope you enjoy the tutorial and happy beading. Hello, today I'm going to teach a lesson on stringing, crimping, and adding a clasp. So on my bead mat I have my cutter, I've got my bead stringing wire, I've got my crimping tool, I have a two-part toggle clasp, I've got two crimps, and I have a small pile of beads waiting for me there. Uh, to start I want to decide what the length of the finished piece I'm going to be making will be and I'll cut my wire uh, for that. So for a 20 inch necklace for example I would cut a 25 to 27 inch piece of wire. That 5 to 7 extra inches allows me some room to work with while I'm stringing my beads. So I have a piece cut and I'm going to start by taking the end of my wire. And I'm going to take a crimp and just thread that crimp right onto the end of the wire. Just like that. And I'll let the crimp drop down about two inches from the end. And then I'm going to take my clasp, thread it onto the wire. And I could just as easily be threading on a closed jump ring and adding my clasp later with an open jump ring, but for now I want to crimp onto my clasp. So I'm going to take my wire, jump up and over that clasp, and thread the wire right back through the crimp. I'm going to take my crimp and slide it down toward the clasp like that. And I want to make sure that I get a loop that is small enough but allows the clasp to move because over time the clasp will move and if the crimp is pinching the wire against the clasp, the clasp is going to wear through that wire uh, right there. So I want to make sure I have a, a small loop but one that allows the clasp to move. Next I'm going to take my crimping plier and my crimping plier has a dip on the bottom and a tooth on the top and I'm going to take the crimp and just rest it right into the dip just like that. And I'm going to show you something. If your crimp happens to slip out of place and your loop gets bigger, don't worry. All you have to do is hold on to the crimp with, your, with the tooth of your plier and then just gently hold on to it and slide it back into place. Just like that. And I'm going to give that crimp a good squeeze. Uh, and then give it a tug test. Now, um, once the crimp has has been dented, it's secure, but I can change the look of it after that if I'd like. So if I want to fold it, I can fold it. If I want to flatten it, I can. If I use a crimp cover, I can cover it up. Uh, for this one, I'm going to fold it. So in order to do that, I want to put uh, the crimp across the flat end of that crimper right there. So I'll lay it across the flat edge and then just give it a nice squeeze. I'll squeeze it right in half makes a nice folded crimp about half the size that it used to be. Now I'm ready to string my beads. So the first bead I add, I want it to be um, a bead with a hole large enough to accommodate not only the main wire that I'm going to make my piece out of, but also the tail um, that's waiting there too. I want to be able to feed both of those wires up through that bead. If I cut my tail right at the crimp, I'm always going to have a little pokey stub of steel uh, sticking out from the bottom of that crimp. So if I can tuck both of the wires in my first couple of beads, then um, the cut end of that tail is going to be hiding inside of a bead. So next I take my cutter. I'm going to nip that wire off. And I'm ready to add the rest of my beads. So I'm going to show you how to finish this piece uh, in, in another video. Um, that's a lesson on crimping and stringing. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for watching. Happy beading.